Suzhou, also known as the Venice of the East, is a Chinese city located near to Shanghai. It is famous for its numerous lakes, its contrasting architecture from modern skyscrapers to historic canals, and its stunning 11th century gardens. Suzhou also happens to be the location of my school. Hi, I'm Charlie, an ESL teacher from the UK. I've been teaching English at a language training centre in China for the past two years. Although I teach a range of ages, from young learners to adults, the perfect class to focus my capstone project on is an intermediate level teenage group, comparable to 8th grade in the US. I chose this class because they are social, enthusiastic and hardworking. Also, having gotten to know them well over the past two years, I felt like they were mature enough to deal with some of the animal rights issues that we investigated in this unit. Initially, I enrolled on the National Geographic Educator Program because I wanted to find new ways to bring topics about the world and environment into my classroom. While researching lesson ideas on the National Geographic blog, I came across an article about the changing conservation status of the giant panda. I soon realized this was exactly what I was looking for, a context that used an iconic Chinese animal to highlight the complex interaction between humans and the natural world. So, in accordance with the National Geographic Learning Framework, I planned a series of lessons to develop student knowledge of the protection of wildlife and to develop their interest in animal rights, all while using the context of the giant panda to spark their interest. The first lesson began with the board race. The students activated their prior knowledge of this topic by recalling all that they knew about pandas. They already knew that pandas eat bamboo, but also thought they might eat people. Since English is a second language for my students, to prepare for the main lesson, students previewed difficult words such as habitat and conservation status by matching words and definitions in a card sort. After some pronunciation drilling, followed by controlled and freer practice, I was confident they were ready for the next stage. The second lesson began with a gist reading task. Students read a transcript taken from a video clip about panda conservation. After considering the general sense of the text, they concluded that the title must be Good and Bad News for Pandas. The students then watched the corresponding footage from a National Geographic documentary. They needed to listen out for several statistics and learn that the estimated number of pandas in the wild is only around 1,850. Once they were familiar with the report, they were given time for a detailed reading of the transcript with the accompanying maps and charts. Students examined the maps to compare the current range of panda habitat with the past. Then they interpreted the conservation status chart and noticed that a 17% increase in population was one factor that helped upgrade the panda from an endangered to vulnerable level. After that, they considered the contrasting opinion of an expert conservationist and National Geographic grantee, Mark Brody. In the end, the students evaluated the statement, pandas are now safe from extinction. After thinking critically and debating the good and bad news for panda conservation, they were unanimous in their opinion that this is not at all true. The final lesson was inspired by another National Geographic article that criticizes China's wildlife protection laws for enabling the mistreatment of animals via bear bio farms, tiger farms, and shark finning. I set the students a research task with the aim of making posters to raise awareness about these animals and their related products. The students displayed the attitude of curiosity and their desire to find out more about the natural world and what they could do to make a difference. They had to use VPN-enabled computers to access international reports and images that aren't blocked by the Great Firewall of China. This extended their project goals from an ecological purpose to a political one. They emulated the skill of collaboration by working together effectively to find multiple sources of evidence and to produce eye-catching, informative posters. By displaying their findings in the common area of our school, they were empowered to educate their local community about unspoken national issues. Before the lesson, I had never heard that so many bears died to make medicine. I didn't know much about bear biofarms. I think people shouldn't use medicine from bear biofarms. I won't buy it and I will tell my family never to buy it and never to hurt wild animals. I had never heard of tiger parts in Chinese medicines. I now know there are around 200 tiger farms and about 5,000 tigers live in very bad condition. 
In the future, I won't buy Tiger White. I will tell my family and friends about it. During the lesson, I found out 100 million sharks a year are killed to make soup. I think people shouldn't kill sharks for their fins because the numbers of them is becoming smaller and smaller. Two years ago, I tried shark fin soup but didn't know how it was made. In the lesson, I learned that shark finning is not good for sharks. We need to protect sharks, so I won't eat it again. I really enjoyed researching this lesson sequence and fully intend to use more National Geographic resources in the future. I would also like to continue developing classes that engage students in topics about nature and the environment while encouraging them to take action to defend it.